Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about CJ's recommendation, Etchy Hero. I mean, sorry, uh, Aesthetica <laughs> of a Rogue Hero. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so much to love. Right, right. Yeah, no, this. Uh, so before we dive into it, we just kind of like talking about AI, AI music, AI art and where everything kind of lands with it. Uh, in regards to that. Um, and uh, if you want to catch a part of that water conversation, join us on patreon.com slash feature anime podcast. A dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content, or you can join us live on Twitch. We stream live usually on Mondays at 10 p.m. Uh, although the last couple of weeks and this week and next week, uh, not so much, but you know, <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, anyways, before we dive into this week's choice, I want to talk about something that is very near and dear to my stomach, and that is Tokyo Treat. Now, Tokyo Treat would like to invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of their own homes. And I know what you're thinking. Jack, what is Tokyo Treat? Well, Tokyo Treat is a fun and exclusive Japanese snack box featuring unique and exclusive flavors straight from Japan. Each box is filled with a variety of full-size Japanese snack items like limited edition Kit Kats, unique flavored Japanese chips, and occasional Japanese sodas that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Now, every box comes with a cultural guidebook containing Japanese cultural information and an explanation of each snack, like the flavor profiles, ingredients, and allergen information which honestly is really, really good because not only would I like to learn more about Japan's culture and everything going on over there, I want to make sure that I'm not eating something that I shouldn't be eating. And I'm sure you feel the exact same way. So this book, honestly, it is great that they include it with every single box. And another great thing about this is every month, Tokyo Treat has a different theme, usually aligning with the season or a holiday in Japan or promoting certain Japanese cultural celebrations. And this month's theme is the Snacktastic Halloween. That's right. This month, Tokyo Treat brings you the experience of Japan's spooky season with fun and wacky snacks packed with their favorite Halloween themed treats and unique flavors. This month's limited edition Halloween snack box captures all the thrill and excitement of japan's haunted holiday don't miss out on experiencing all the spooky sweet and surprising flavors of a japanese halloween in this exclusive tokyo treat box now some of the treats in this box are going to be the kit kat apple pie or the spooky spicy crackers which were really good and the ghost gummies. But there's also a couple other things in there like the Halloween Harvest, uh, Corinto. And as we have all heard me talk about before, anytime something's in a chewy, crispy, cheesy puff thing, I love it. And that's right. They have the Halloween pizza puffs in here. They are delicious. I love them. They are Really, honestly, one of my favorite snacks in the box, aside from all the other wonderful candy treats. And honestly, every single thing in here is a winner. You're not going to find a treat in here that you're not going to like. So special for our listeners, if you use our affiliate link in the show notes, along with coupon code featured anime, you're going to get yourself $5 off that very first box. That's right. If you use our affiliate link and coupon code featured anime you get five dollars off that very first box and trust me it is worth it and now on to the main show anyways uh, aesthetica of rogue hero is uh 12 episodes long it came out in july 2012 ran all the way through september uh Atlantis, Media Factory, ATX, just to name a couple of the producers. It's Studios Arms. It's based off a light novel. Genres are action, fantasy, etchy, harem, isekai. So, yes. Basically, this takes a different viewpoint on the isekai genre in the fact that the Demon Lord's already been defeated and he is able to, our main protagonist, is able to return back to the home world. 
And he's now a part of the school or this program where thousands of people have been summoned to another world and have since returned. And when they've returned, they carry back with them their magic, their powers, their strengths, everything that they had with them. So these are particular areas where they go to hone, train, and strengthen themselves. And uh, our main character, Akatsuki, is known as the rogue hero. And he instead goes back to his home world, does the exact does what a majority of other people tend to do. And he is now trying to basically make his way through life with his new younger sister, Mew, and basically kind of just, I would say, mosey on through life in a manner of speaking while integrating her into society while figuring out what he wants to do in the long run. Nothing else. I mean, we could talk about the etchy, but we already know that that's like 90% of the anime. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, so I watched this by myself at first. And then my wife walks in and she's like, what's going on? I was like, oh, no, it's just a show. CJ recommended it. And I'd like to see how you feel. And she's like, all right, cool. Let's sit down and watch it together. I said, not a problem. Let's do this thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is not one you, uh, this, this is one you watch no, more so. No, it's not one you want to share. It's, uh, it's one you li- watch in literally? shame. You watch in shame. That's what you do. You watch in shame. I, I shamefully watched this on my phone in the dark while my wife was asleep. That's when I watched it. Oh, no, no. I, I fully, she was there and I was like, hey, we're here now. Let's, let's just get through this. Uh, to be fair, and... I had my reasons why I couldn't watch it during the day. Otherwise, I would. But this is neither here nor there. Just set oh, that's the, fair. That's understandable. Set the, the premise of like where you normally would want to watch this. You wouldn't normally want. To, this is not when you want to watch in public, for sure. No, absolutely 100%. not. You don't. You also want to wear headphones. Yes. Because she goes. My wife goes. I'm not gonna sit here. And I, I got better stuff to do. I was like, all right, no problem. So we start cleaning up the area that we have for the baby coming and. um <laughs> I've got uh, the volume's not maxed. I want to point that out, but it's up enough for me to hear. And she rounds the corner. She goes, "Are you still watching the same show?" And I go, "Yeah." She goes, "The sounds, the sounds don't sound like an anime." <laughs> I was like, well, oh, "What do you mean?" She goes, it's, "It sounds way worse. Like every time I get within earshot, it's a bad time. It's the wrong time." And there's nothing like, but right, bad look. or wrong times in this all the way throughout. There really isn't. This is, this is it's wonderful. Yeah, no, this is, oh, this is it, not, this is not one for it to say the least at all, man. I mean, you, well, like this, this entire show is basically, yeah, it's him being a, a bamf, right? He's being awesome, yeah. but this is certainly not one that uh that you would want to watch around a lot of other people simply because it's it's one he gropes a lot he plays oh, a his lot special move his special move is like the 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 removing of bra and undies it, it's like he's got this magic hand that unbeknownst to anybody and everybody is like swoop gotcha and then took everything off of them and then they're like uh whoopsie it was just Every boy's dream is to be a sleight of hand master. This, and he, this, this man guy takes, takes it to a whole other level. He is on a whole other planet in regards to it. He's not <laughs> even near him, and all of a sudden it just disappears. It's like, haha, I now have your panties. Oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like, how did you get them? Like, where did you get them? How did you First get them? All, where did they go? What? They're wearing pants some, in some instances. How, I, you know, it makes no sense. And then the beach scene, the, the, the beach episode, the obligatory beach episode that I was like, how are they going to top themselves here? Um, they did. They did. Yeah. I enjoyed yeah. I, 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 I enjoyed how they approached it because quite it literally was, it was new. It, it was, was refreshing. It was a point to where he goes, Hey, you know what? There's nothing that says I can't go after them and take theirs. 
They're yeah. supposed to try and take mine. He he goes straight out. He starts taking everyone's across the board, awesome. no matter what. It's amazing. So you, it's, you remember back in the nineties, the girls gone wild. Yeah. Excerpts from yeah, like yeah. the you know yeah, yeah, midnight yeah, yeah, or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently they do something very similar in this world. Uh, but here's the thing. Only guys have the ability to be entered into this uh, drawing, right? And I don't at remember the end that. Of the hour, yep. And no, no. They specifically said that only guys um, were entered in there. They're, don't worry, ladies. We only put the guys' names in here because the winner keeps the 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 swim trunks, the the bathing suit. Whoever holds the bathing suit of the special number they pull at the end of the. Um, hour is the winner and they get um what was it like it was it was some decent prize um and the only reason the only the, the only rule is you can't leave the beach you got to be on the beach you're allowed to go anywhere nowhere's off limits except don't leave the beach uh, <laughs> so i want to point out real quick um okay like we have an entire plethora of episodes that we could talk about an entire swath of stories we can focus on. And the oh, we do. one we absolutely you do. focus on, the one you just like hone straight in on, like almost uh, immediately. You asked, you asked for the meat and potatoes. The I I'm didn't just saying. ask for the meat and potatoes. I said we are getting into the meat and potatoes. I'm just saying, like yeah, I was talking about. I was talking about all kinds of other stuff, different episodes, trying to like, Hey, this is etchy and everything like that. It's questionable. And you're like, yeah, that beat scene, bro. I paused it. I know it's like, I paused it it. and I I compared the frames and it was fantastic and everything like that. It was true to life. No, I didn't need to pause it. That's, that's, that's this anime. No need to pause because if you do, you're going to miss the next scene. You're going to miss the next scene. You're going to miss the next scene. <laughs> but the, the 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 beach scene for me symbolizes the, the whole show. Yeah, it symbolizes I, I'm the whole sure show. Sure, it does. For no other reason than the, sure than the antics. I'm sure it does. Somehow, while playing with the rules playing with the rules, playing by the rules, all of the above, somehow our main character still loses. Somehow, some way, he's still wrong by the by the metric of whoever is looking at him. And it is hilarious. Um, I really what? wished... Now, this is going to sound odd considering um, my reputation here, uh, but I really hope there's a season two. And the only reason I hope there's a season two is there seems to be a rather good story that could oh. be portrayed. And yeah. I'm not even, if they oh, don't yeah. show any more Soma, if they don't show any more Echi, if they don't if they don't show any more nudity in any way, shape, or form, I feel like they've got a really good story on their hands here. And it's Yeah, you what you're hoping for is uh four episodes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Four, four more episodes. Why, why? Why specifically four? Because I feel like that would make you happier. That if they could cram everything into four small episodes. Yeah, I guess you're right. No, I'm saying four beach episodes that you would be oh, happy. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, one is plenty. Trust me. It, we, the reason why it works so well <laughs> is because it's not gratuitous like that. There's definitely gratuitous etchy here. They they don't really show they don't really hide too much. Um obviously no bottoms, but that that you know, full on chest, everything. Oh, yeah. uh, that was one of my one of the things my wife noticed. Go, oh, they show that here. Like apparently they do. Yeah. And God love her, she goes, "Who who whose choice was this? It was Jack's, wasn't it?" I go, "Actually, no." He goes, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." Why, like, CJ. Uh, she goes, out of oh, all the ones that, that I choose, why is my name like, how did Jack choose it? That is <laughs> obvious. Because. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang oh, on. Okay, I okay, want to okay. point out, I want to, I want to, I want to yep. premise all the etchy, super etchy ones like Keijo and all oh, the other ones. Yep. 
mm-hmm. straight up. Wife asked you who who uh, recommended this? Oh, Jack, hundred percent, totally recommended this one. I didn't, I, I didn't want to watch this. <laughs> no. I wanted, to, I said no, Jack. I don't want to watch this. I want to watch something wholesome. I yes, said, exactly. yeah, yeah. So, so what you're saying is I you lie to your nay, wife, nay. and and, and no, you, not at all. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 not at all. No, no. I am forthright and forthcoming, and I am honest. Blame me for all your choices. I blame you for nothing. All my I blame all. CJ. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so that doesn't answer the question though. Like, why would she just like, oh, Jack chose this? You had to have like laid yes. groundwork down beforehand. I did, and I can explain it very, very simply. Blame me for your choices. When, yes. No, no, no. When I choose an anime that I am not sure of. Now, there are three anime in particular. I know you're gonna just spout out uh because I did choose them. I just weren't aware they were that bad when I chose them. Um, oh, I'm sure you she did. knows that. <laughs> no, Triage X was just out there. I uh, No Game yeah, No Life I, I is another one that you chose. And it is not an etchy. etchy. It is. Everyone like, says it's it, etchy. That's this, not, that's everyone, not I, everyone says it's etchy. The genres for it, it listen, etchy. I, I including, I, I including hang on, hang on. You're gonna like no. this. You're gonna like this. I promise you. You're okay. gonna. You're gonna okay. like this. All right. Let me. Let me go to the uh, um, um, comments. Get some that, receipts oh, that, from that, the comments. From the comments. All right. <laughs> okay. On uh, Spotify. So I mean, like, if you want to go in there and leave a comment, please feel free to do so. We would be happy to to hear your comments and and uh, receive your comments for sure. Uh, Miku. Okay. Says it's definitely an etchy. It's <laughs> definitely an etchy. Right? They're, they're, everyone's in everyone's mind. Like it's an etchy. They it is straight up an etchy. It's uh you got panties being shown, you got Dola, who's there just for fan service. It's an etchy, <laughs> bro. It's like there's there's no getting around it. It's a pure etchy. And Keijo, another one that you recently chose. You knew it was yeah. an etchy. Oh, I knew it's that. Yeah, that was yes. hilarious. Yes. It's All a right. sport. It's a sport played in bikinis. You, right, you, right, right, you, right. you can't get around that one. Like I'll I'll, get, I'll, I'll take the rap for that one. Right, right, right. Um <clears throat> however, I typically run stuff by you first. And I the stuff that I recommend typically does doesn't have uh, nudity to that extent. Like etchy, okay, it, it might be an etchy. That's with for, the again, exception no of no triage X. Boggles my mind. With the exception, that one I didn't know. I right, right, honestly, right, 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 I hadn't right, right, watched right. that before, and I, I, I was. Oh, I'm sure it was recommended to me years ago, and I was. Oh, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure. oh, cool. So I was like, it'll be good. I didn't realize. Oh, man, lying through his teeth, tooth, sir, lying through my tooth. Um. <laughs> but no, I, I try to run stuff through you first or buy you first. And cause you're, you're my, my filter, my sieve almost of what is okay. And what is not because while I don't want to throw, I mean like straight, sieve, sieve, sieve is like, what? is not a very good filter. I mean, well, it's a filter. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, well, you I wanna... run stuff by you because I know that my, my metric isn't suitable all the time for a radio yeah. or things like that. Um, so I try to push stuff through. Like I, I, I submit it to you first before I say it on here or I try to. Right. And uh, it, it typically doesn't contain uh, nipplage. Let's call it. Um, it. It might show, you know, clouds and whatnot for such as in freezing. But uh, no, it, it just depends it on how you're show... watching. Well, it's because you're choosing to watch either censored or, or uncensored, and there are plenty that we have seen that you have recommended that are censored. You can, yeah, totally... I didn't know that they were gun censored. Yeah, they like a lot of the anime services that are out there. If you're choosing mature, will actually show uncensored shows or start oh. to. So, 
uh, just well, none of that, that particular. Uh... <laughs> I try to stay away from that because I, I am trying to sure, keep sure, it sure, family sure. friendly, you know. Sure, 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 sure. So sure, sure. when she when she saw that and immediately thought of you, she I imagine she was like, "Oh, he must have okayed this," because she knows that I wouldn't intentionally be like, "I want to see tits," because that doesn't. While yes, I do. That's awesome. I'm a guy. There's a joke that, uh, oh, shish kebab. What's his name? Um, I'll remember his name when, when we finally get off of here. But the joke is, once you see one pair, you want to see the rest. And <laughs> while respectfully, yes, but in reality, like there, there are some limitations, of course. You don't want to do things to the extreme. Okay. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Okay, so you, as you continue to dig and everything like that, just get to the part to why <laughs> I it was assumed why I chose she thought this. it was you. Yes, be- because she knows I wouldn't be that blatant. Okay, she she knows that I wouldn't sure. be like, oh yeah, almost porn. Let's watch that. Really? <laughs> yeah. She does not know you well enough. Uh, which again goes back to what the chat is saying you just blame me for everything that's at you on there despite the fact <laughs> no. that you're the one choosing it so oh, no, um, I was very I was very anyways. aware that it wasn't you and I told her that too <laughs> anyways <sighs> um, the show the that is honestly like the large part of, of the show is there's a lot of antics a lot of just shenanigans happening in here and all of them are very questionable in terms of situation yeah. that being said i do agree with what cj had said in his recommendation which is the power scaling and the power leveling and the aspect and the overall idea behind this is actually really unique and really cool in the sense that everyone's going being summoned to these other worlds but now they're actually coming back and so they have this syndrome called a uh, summon syndrome where people are basically you know, hey, you know, I'm done. I defeated the demon lord or anything like that. And then I came back to this world. And now they're moving on with their lives. And so they're basically in a school trying to hone their skills. And that is the surface level premise reasoning for that school. Now there's so I other okay. foresights. There's other thoughts, other plot points that lead you to possibly thinking or seeing something else. But that's end game stuff. That's like towards the end of whatever it is. But yeah. there's also a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of discussions that happen there where you kind of look at it and go, I feel like there's just a large portion of the picture I'm missing. And that is 100% true because in terms of power scaling and leveling and everything like that, people know what his, what uh, Akatsuki's power is it's just that no one uses it or no one has it other than him which means when other people were brought brought into those worlds or drawn in there they were given an option for that particular power but opted not is my understanding from how i interpreted it because there's a lot of people that know about it but they they don't really you know explore it beyond what he's got See, I understood it as a ability that, yes, people can recognize, but not many people can use, such as Chi or something like that. Because he mentioned he wasn't good with magic. Well, and he most can't, people who get some. He can't use magic. He gave up magic for this particular power. So everyone else that gives up, that goes into those worlds, they're given that power. Like they're given magic or they can use magic. He, he gives up his ability to use magic for his power. Basically, his oh. his power and his strength is like think chi, right? Yeah. It's like that. That's his power, right? But just powered up to the umpteenth degree to where his body is hard as iron, and you can't pierce it with a sword. And he can like demolish r- walls, and his strength and speed and everything like that is drastically increased. And he's also able to use it to heal himself, but also help others heal them themselves too. So it's not healing in the sense (laughs) that, you know, oh, I cast a healing spell on you. It's, hey, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to force you to your body to accelerate its healing process. So that way you're taken care of. Now, taking that to the 
the logical extreme, he's essentially shortening people's lives because he's just making the healing process that much faster. And if you end up going with the uh, scientific view of Talamirs and whatnot, who oh, have oh, to have oh, a hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you bringing up t- scientific views in a world of magic where people are tr- able to transport themselves between and <laughs> t- yes, between I worlds? Am. Okay. All right. And, and then they have uh, lingerie and bathing suits that disappear with temperature or water. Right. I mean, you've seen the glasses that turn to shades when they hit sunlight, right? No, oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Same thing. All right. So, yeah, continue on with your real world science and logic, uh, <laughs> by all means. All I'm saying is there's no, he doesn't go into whether or not he could reverse that or, or whatnot. He just, when he gets poisoned, he says, I just increased, I manipulated my body to increase the white blood cell count to handle it on its own. And. It seems like it seems like it's a it's a unique ability, not because he's got it and, and everyone has access to it. It seems like a unique ability because not everyone has access to it. Okay, yeah. CJ in our chat set in, in our chat oh. says uh, in his world, the world he was summoned to, that was an option, but it's not an option in every world, which oh, okay. makes sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. So. So, but at the exact same time, I would assume that it's probably uh, available in other worlds at the exact same time. Not every be. world, but I would assume other worlds to say the least. Now, what the qualifications or conditions for you to be able to get that kind of power or to be able to go that particular path is unknown. It's never discussed. And they never venture through it. They just yeah. simply say, hey, I have this thing. Now, hmm. It just appears to me to be a cure-all slash um, MacGuffin of whatever I need. Because whatever he needs it to do, for some reason, he's able to make it happen. And the way that it makes it sound, the way that he makes it sound is he wasn't very good at at magic. He didn't have a a strong affinity for it, so he chose this instead. Um, But it's kind of confusing to me because the band's in the training area that was that they use in order to produce a weapon. Um, how did that work how, in your, in your experience, not experience, but in your understanding, how does, how does that work? Huh? The bands they use to create the weapons yeah. that he was unable to use one, two, three, he had to wear like nine or 10 of them. Yep. How did that work? Because if he doesn't have much magic, I, I took it as he's got too much magic or he doesn't have enough because he had to use so many of those bands that would help him gather and, and focus mana in order to create his weapon. Whereas the other people just needed one or two. I would probably venture to say it's that he doesn't have much magic. Not that he has no magic. I mean, it would make sense because he, he did state that he wasn't very good at it. So maybe he just didn't have an affinity. Not, not to say that he had none. It was just weak in comparison. and He never trained it. Right. That or he if just I was has to go into a world that gave me that. Right. The or or he just has too much. I mean like you could go the other direction entirely that it just one couldn't handle the amount of magic for whatever he was trying to produce. And see that was my thought as well, which is why I, I mentioned that it was one or the other. But right. I wanted to know what your opinion of it was. Uh it's the honestly my thought process is is, is it could be that his I was leaning more towards the his his power or what he was trying to create or the ideal weapon that he was creating. One couldn't handle it. Multiple needed to be used for. Okay, that makes sense. So he needed, in order to control the mana, to get into the shape that he wanted to create a strong enough weapon that would suit him, or to create a weapon at all that would suit him. More more bands to elicit more control were necessary. That that was my thought process on it. Okay, I mean it would it would definitely explain why when he overused it, one of the bands broke. Yep. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, either way, he seems. One of the things I liked about the this anime seems to be that the hero is traumatized in some fashion. You know. Yes. And it, it's not necessarily like a PTSD, but but it's not not a PTSD where you, we do get snippets of his fight with the Demon King. We do get snippets of his 
his uh, memory that's encased in fire. We do get snippets of his real life where his sister did die. His sister did pass away. Right. Um, we really don't get too much into that. Like he's very secretive when it comes to that. Yeah. But um, I think that it, it shows a slightly tortured individual who is coping in a way that most of us would not agree with. Um, but I thought the, I thought the, uh, the introduction to him where he's running with a pack on his back and, uh, he goes, wow, you guys took a whole crew, a whole, um, it wasn't a committee, but a whole battalion after me. Yeah. And he goes, I, I should feel honored. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. He goes, or should I feel insulted that you only sent one? <laughs> <laughs> and then he just pulls the badass out. I was like, okay, okay. It's not a weak to strong. It's just I'm already overpowered. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. he goes, he ends up going back home. It's like he already knew what was going to happen before he left. And then what I yeah. thought was very odd to me, uh, and this, this does go into the last episode kind of things. Um, it did seem like he was able to transport himself uh, to and from the dimension at will. And I don't think that's normal for everybody else. Uh, well, I know you're talking about the end because that's the only time they, they really explore it. Well, yes, but it wasn't so much happened before. And, and before that, obviously the whole series happened before that, but it just seemed quite odd that, not necessarily. I, I, I feel like if end end game territory, straight up, honestly, it's not unusual for people to to go to a do to go to another dimension or do the dimensional shift, as what they call it, because the vice president straight up stated it just from the faint glow she saw. It's like, oh, he is doing that, and then rushed in. So other and other people knew it. Everyone knows everyone. It's not that everyone can do it. I feel like it's select people that can, which again goes to the, that not that he doesn't have magic. The I'm leaning towards the, he has a lot of magic, but those circlets couldn't handle the type of weapon that wanted to be created that needed to be created for him because it probably for you to be able to do that type of dimensional shift, you have to have a lot of magic. Okay. I can, Okay, I can see the fact that, you, yeah. But so, how come? Maybe I just did this. It was several dozen times. I feel like that no one ever comes back. Like you know, it's it's typically a one trip there, one trip back kind of thing. What and the only about? reason that um, the heroes don't come back, some like, choose in, in the, to not come back. Well, in the other. In the other world where he had killed the Demon King, it was stated several times that they can't come back, even though um, he, the Akatsuki promised, hey, if you ever need me, I'll be there, that kind of thing. And then only because one guy formed a contract with a spatial entity, he was able to go higher back and forth or attempt life to, form. Higher, higher life, life form. form. Right. No, and again, it's not that he can't come back. It's highly unlikely or for them to come back. They never come back because they don't want to come back. It's not never specifically stated that they are prevented from coming back. It's that they, they simply state they never come back, which can be taken a number of ways, right? could be taken the way you're taking it, which, which, Hey, once they leave, that's it to put, they're no longer returning. Or it could be taken as a, once they leave, they never want to return. So that way they never really want to come back. Right. Or it's, they never come back because the way for them to be able to come back is just extremely difficult. Okay. Right. So they don't, in my perspective, they don't go into enough details or they, they themselves do not know. Right. Because okay, higher I life form, see that. because a higher life form can do a dimensional shift themselves. They can go to and from, right? And you even stated yourself, the one guy that made a contract with the higher life form was going to be able to come back, but for obvious reasons, he was not able to. Okay. 
But that's my own perspective on it. That's my own take on it. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. Because that's how I interpreted it. And yeah, you can. Um, it's just one of those. Yeah. We'll have to. Yeah. I, I see you constantly Googling and furiously Googling so that I'm way you can go. Gotcha. Trying to, because I'm trying to see. No, 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 no. Not a gotcha. Because <laughs> I'm curious myself. I, I don't want to discredit what you're saying. But just go at the with same time, what it's the inf- frustrating. Right. Well, just go with the information that's given to you in the anime rather than reading cliff notes about time traveling granddaughters. I promise I'm not. I'm actually going on Crunchyroll right now trying to find out um where I saw him say that he doesn't have much magic. But it's if Well, he, again, it's fine. well, can... here's the thing, right? Going back to what he originally said. He doesn't have much magic, right? In his own perspective, he's like, oh, I don't really have much magic or much to use, which is, I think, a, much affinity of magic, yeah. Right. It's like, I don't know, probably episode four, where he says that four or five, wherever they get those wristbands. Okay. But again, that's okay. his own perspective. That is not the genuine facts of it, though. And which is why I'm stating, like, he probably has a lot more magic than what he realizes because he doesn't, and he doesn't realize how much magic he has because of the path he chose which is totally possible okay. because there's certainly situations or or writing where there are characters that are like that they don't realize how op they are or how much they have until it's finally pointed out right so that's neither here nor there all we know is when he has to take multiple multiple bands yeah right? Okay. He has to take multiple bands. He creates this super sword that seems interesting. Um, come ground, go on, come ground. Yeah, well, no, he creates this really awesome sword okay. that doesn't use don't magic. Know if it has abilities. Right. Well, he he uses when he when he attacks, he's able to throw a, a, a slash of sorts. It looks like a slash of magic. Maybe yeah, I'm but wrong. he never specifically says says it's magic. Even when he does his ball of energy or whatever it is, he specifically says energy it's bomb. Not, yeah, yeah, it's his key. Right. He doesn't say it's magic, so it's not magic. Right. So the basis is he he does not use magic. Right. It, it's not his forte. It's not what he what he plans for. So there you go. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> we can honestly continue to keep going. We could go di- deeper into this, but I don't have too much else I can really state on this. Uh, how about you, sir? I think I'm good. All right. I think I'm good. So on a scale of up to 10, sir, how would you rate this? I would rate this in all honesty, mainly because of the fact that you won't be able to watch it outside of outside of a a safe environment for you. Um, I'm going to have to go with like a six. I would recommend it, but I'd recommend it with um, prejudice. No, not prejudice. Reservation. Reservation, yeah. I'm like, hey, just do yourself a favor. Maybe you don't go out in public and, and watch this on the loud screen. Um, you might get some looks, if you will. It's a good story, and it's got potential in my mind. Even if you take all the etchy out, I think it's a funny story. It's a good story. Um, if the main character wasn't as perverted as he was, I think it would have a much wider audience. Um, one of the other things I really disliked, just, I don't know if it's a character flaw or if it's just overplayed by a lot of the stuff, um, I've seen, um, but the green haired girl and then the student council who he's able to essentially pants at every turn and outplay her at every turn, right? for some reason, never acknowledges the fact that he's stronger than her. Everyone around her is saying, you know, he could take us all out without really much effort. And she goes, no, it's just unfair advantage. I, we can take him. No problem. I can take him by myself. It's so unrealistic and I'm sorry, frustratingly like, so. This is a common trope that's played in a lot of animes and a lot of shows in general. I mean, that's probably why I don't like it. It, it kind of is. It seems it outplayed. Is. Yeah, uh, CJ says, man acts like he's never seen a stubborn Sundra before. Just, saying, <laughs> just, uh, it, it, just uh, not acknowledging power and thinking you're stronger are two different things. It's just, it got tired fast for me. But other than that, I was decent. Okay. All right. Uh, for me, I'm going with a five. 
Go with 5-1 because it's a completely open ending. I'm not a fan of that. I did not care with how many separate plot lines that they started and didn't complete all the side stories, all the references, all the little tidbits here and there throughout it. I was not a fan of. I did not like it, um, to say the least. It, it's one of the biggest bugaboos, as we all know, like for the years that we've been doing this. Open editing, open yeah. plot lines, all these unanswered questions. <laughs> Jack hating it? No. <laughs> right? No. Straight up didn't didn't like it. However, however, um I do like the idea that they went with. I do like the kind of power scaling that they kind of toyed with. Uh I felt like it was really rushed and compressed though. Uh with all those open plot lines and open story endings, I feel like they could have done a lot better had they taken their time. And Mm -hmm. not focused on the etchy so much, but focused on the actual plot line. But I get it. I get, I get why he is the way he is. And, and, and they do answer some of those questions, but that's why I got to go with the five. It's like every, almost every episode I was given at least three or four more, more questions. And it just left me with no answers. Yeah, that makes sense. I can understand that. I can respect that. All right. So next week, we are going to be watching a recommendation from Goose, believe it or not. It's going to be a 12-episode okay. show. Uh, it's a funny show, and we all know Rick loves harems, is what Goose says. Uh, it's a good comedy, <laughs> okay. too, and I found it quite enjoyable, is what he said. It's uh, Rene Bokun. So that's what we're going to be watching. We're going to be watching a recommendation from Goose. We haven't, haven't uh, given any uh ones from uh goose in quite a while so why not well that's all the time that we have for today thanks for hanging out with us if you feel like we got something right something wrong did too much justice not enough justice or anything like that or any point in between feel free to let us know reach out to us uh, all the contact information is available in our show notes or on our website at featured anime podcast.com and until next time i'm jack <laughs> i'm rick and we'll see you next time